Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Bryce from BIS Media, and I'm here to give my review on the LG C3 55-inch 4K TV. This was definitely a blast review, and I'm definitely ready to let you guys know my thoughts on this TV. But before we tackle the unboxing of this TV, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. If you enjoy physical media unboxings, digital movie giveaways, tech reviews like this one, and much, much more, then consider hitting that subscribe button to stay notified of all my future videos, like this video, and leave me a comment down below on your thoughts on this TV. So with that being said, let's dive into what's in the box. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the unboxing of the C3. This is the 55 inch version of this model. This is actually the biggest model that I can unbox myself without any help. And with that also being a huge eyesore in the living room because it just has to sit off to the side while I'm unboxing and reviewing this. So first up we have the manual and then we also have the remote that's within that little pack there. And then this is the back panel and also the first part of the TV stand. I didn't realize with this TV it actually has two pieces to the stand itself that you have to screw together which I'll show you guys later. And then the top of the styrofoam has a little quick start how to get everything out of the box. I have done this a few times, so I didn't need it. <laughs> and then here is the stand itself. It is metal, so it is pretty heavy and pretty sturdy. It's a pretty nice little stand that it does come with. Let's go ahead and get that box out of the way. And then what I like to do is go ahead and set up the styrofoam. So that way I can actually lay down the TV to be able to screw in the stand. If you're going to be wall mounting this, you don't really need to lay it down on this. You could honestly just lay it on the carpet or something soft, like a blanket if you really wanted to. This just makes it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get this plastic out of the way. Let's go ahead and see how we, or actually how we attach this. And so once I have the stand together, all you need to do is just insert these screws. There's just four of them, Phillips head screws. Go ahead and screw them in. It's as easy as that. It's not the too complicated. Just wanna make sure you have them tight just enough. You don't wanna over tighten them because if you strip this and you need to actually take this apart, that would not be a fun ordeal to have to deal with. <laughs> So now that we have this together, we can go ahead and set it up on the stand if we would like to do that. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the TV and see what it does include. So on the back here, everything is off to the left side of the TV. So we have three USB 3.0s, then we have four 2.1 HDMIs, and these are all 4K 120 hertz. It does have a LAN in, so you get a way you can do ethernet. And then after that is the digital audio out that has, does have a service connector so if you have someone coming over to work on the tv they would be able to connect it from that service port then we have the antenna and then at the very very bottom there's also an ir blaster that actually does come with this tv as well if you wanted to use that so with that being said guys that is all of the unboxing let's go ahead and jump into the review and see what my thoughts are on this tv in terms of pros and cons All right, guys, we now know what comes inside the box, but more importantly, how well does it perform? I'll be giving you all my review in terms of pros and cons, so let's not waste any time and dive right in. We'll begin with the pros of this TV, and the first pro being picture quality. I mentioned this in my quick first impressions video, but my eyes were completely blown away at how well the picture quality was with this OLED. To date, this is the best picture I've ever seen before and had in the test, so I truly enjoyed every moment I had with this TV. This TV can handle all the HDR formats to date, such as HDR10 and Dolby Vision, so your eyes will have plenty to feast on. If you're looking to buy and secure the best picture quality out there, then this should easily be at the top of your list. The second pro is a big jump for me, and that's the response time. The C3 operates off the A9 Gen 6 AI processor chip, which is insanely fast compared to my 77-inch LG B2. My BT uses an older A7 Gen 5, so this feels like a rush of fresh air, and my wife kept asking me if we could keep the C3 because of this very pro. I tested the speed by opening tons of apps at the same time, but it didn't seem to slow it down a bit. The interface can be a bit clunky, which we'll talk about later, but the processor almost hides this flaw and really shows off its next-gen capabilities. If you've been using the C1 or C2, you may not see much of a bump in response performance, but if you're using a B-series model, then you'll be happy that you upgraded as you won't be waiting much at all for anything to load or open when flicking through this TV. 
my third pro for this TV is also a great indication of getting your money's worth, and that being its build quality. OLED screens seem to get thinner and thinner every year, and it's always a bit nerve-wracking getting those things out of the box. The panel itself is only 1.77 inches thick, which is insanely thin, so of course you want to be careful with it, but it felt surprisingly solid. When picking it up and moving at any point, it didn't bend in my hands or bow even slightly. Better yet, the chassis is made of textured brushed metal, which looks and feels premium. There's a large plastic panel in the middle of the backing. This is to house the inputs and internals, and this is pretty common on OLEDs from what I've seen before. I also appreciated the thin borders surrounding the TV, as they are only 0.22 inches thick, which is barely noticeable and really added to the immersion experience when viewing. All in all, the build quality and design are excellent on this TV, so if you're looking for build quality that leans into viewing immersion and premium build, then you can add this as another reason why you might want this TV for your home. My fourth pro is also a big deal with OLED TVs and really stirs debates online, which is brightness. OLEDs are widely known not to get nearly as bright as LEDs, mini LEDs, QLEDs, and the newer QD OLEDs. However, I've noticed each year the specs get brighter and brighter over time, especially with the C models and up because of the evil panels. The C3 definitely gets plenty bright and really fights back against the glare. This will still perform great in the bright room, but I wouldn't recommend placing this where you have tons of direct sunlight hitting the screen. It's bright, but the glossy mirror-like nature of the panels can make it difficult to diffuse immense sunlight compared to a standard LED TV. So I keep placement and room lighting in mind before ultimately committing to an OLED in general. Now my fifth and final pro adds to the eye candy I mentioned before, and that being the color and viewing angles. The C3's color handling is great, and colors really pop and look true to their color. As you can see on the screen, I've included what ratings.com rated that you see three is color gamut and color volume on screen. Sure, there's still other TVs that may rank at a little higher than the C3, but as their own description says, it's still pretty great. Banking off this, if you have a wide viewing angle, then you also find this TV to be great for your setup. Like most OLEDs, it has a wide viewing angle with minimal loss of colors, no matter the angle. Ratings.com has this rated at a 9.3 out of 10, which is close to perfection, which should leave no seat left out of a beautiful 4K image. This is personally one of the main reasons why I chose an OLED over other TVs because of my seating arrangement, and I hate the washed out look that other TVs often give off when seated to the side. It drives me crazy. So those are my five pros for the LG C3, but no TV is perfect, unfortunately, and there's still some cons to discuss, so let's get into them. Now the cons were honestly a lot harder for me to find in my short time testing this, but the first thing that stood out to me was the OEM remote. LG has been using the same remote design for about 10 years with little to no changes. The saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and LG is absolutely living by it. <laughs> if you have any of the 2022 models, then you'll notice the only thing different in the 2023's models are some of the streaming buttons. It's not to say the Magic Remote doesn't work well, but I feel there should be more innovation done to them to make them feel fresh and new. Maybe backlit buttons or a smooth matte black finish to help reduce scratches and fingerprints on the plastic would be a start. It may not matter to some, but it stuck out to me as somewhat around the OLED game for many, many years. The next con is something that's more common and others have mentioned before, which is the user interface. The current interface, which was first introduced two or so years ago, it's still a bit clunky at times, and there's a lot happening on the screen. It has built-in ads that appear on the top banner, which are truly unnecessary, but on the bright side, you can turn them off if you know where to dig in the settings. There's also tons of recommended content that appears as you scroll down, which to me just feels like things that fill the screen. It doesn't really need to be there. But luckily, the C3's fast processor zips through these things quickly, but I'm afraid with updates over time, it may get bogged down get hung up all the things constantly flowing around the screen. Some people may love this interface, especially if you're new to LG OLEDs, but for those who remember the clean, simpler software from a few years ago, you probably share my disdain for this newer, busier look. And with those two cons, that officially concludes my review of the LG C3 OLED, which leaves one big final question. Do I recommend this TV? 100% yes. This TV is near perfect in my opinion, I'd rate it 9.5 out of 10. 
if you're looking for perfect blacks, infinite contrast, great picture quality, a snapper processor, and next-gen gaming features, then look no further. I had to reach a little bit to find cons for this TV, and as I said before, no TV is perfect, but this one definitely cuts it close. I keep an eye out for sales as the 2024 series OLEDs are sure to hit shelves relatively soon, so the B3, C3, and G3 should drop in price a little as a result. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have an Amazon affiliate link to this TV in the description below. And then you can let me know what you think of this beauty in your home, and you can leave me a comment below afterwards. With that being said, guys, this does conclude the video, so be sure to hit the like button if this was helpful for you. Hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for weekly videos. And be sure to leave me a comment of your thoughts on this TV, or if you already own it. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and see y'all in the next video.